So let's continue our SAT practice. Um, again, I recommend pausing each problem, trying it before I go over the solutions. We'll dive right in with this. So right here, I see um, two different functions, one b, one c, both equal to something in terms of x. And so in the equations above, b and c represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively. X weeks after July 1st during the summer. What was the price per pound of beef when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken? So the, the critical part here is um, when it was equal. And the probably the best way to deal with this is saying the following. That just means that B will equal C. And so if B is equal to C, that means that this expression will equal that expression. So I could have 2.35 plus 0.25x equals 1.75 plus 0.40x. And notice this equation has one variable, which means I will either be able to solve it or it'll be a special case of no solution or infinitely many solutions. This one is actually solvable. Now I can do this many ways, but being a little lazy, let's get rid of the decimals. So notice this goes to a hundredths place. This goes to the hundredths place. This goes to the hundredths place. This goes to hundredths, but I could have written, I could have cut off at the tenths place. But since things go no deeper than the hundredths, that means if I multiply everything by 100, I'll have no more, no more decimals. They'll all be integer values. Because 100 times 2.35 is 235. So I'll go through and do that. Makes my problem a little bit easier for me to deal with. And now I solve like any other equation. I will get the x's on the same side. I'm going to subtract the 25 instead of the 40x because that'll keep my x's positive. Not that it makes any big difference. However, um, it just it gives me less opportunity to mess up by forgetting to deal with a negative. So I still have 235 equals 175 plus 15x. I will subtract the 175 from both sides. And 235 minus 175 is 60. And finally, divide by 15, and I get that 4 is equal to x, which means that um, this is this will happen 4 weeks after July 1st. However, it asks for the price per pound of beef. Now, if it's equal to chicken, I can actually use either one, but I'll just use the beef equation because that's the one that it's specified. So I know that the value of beef 4 weeks in will be 2.35 plus 0 0.25 times 4. Notice I'm going back to the full decimal value here. And 0.25 times 4 is 1. You know, 4 quarters is a dollar. So 2.35 plus 1 dollar gives me $3.35, which is right here. Now, that's one possibility. Another possibility is this. I could have done weak beef chicken, and just if I understood that I was trying to figure out what the price was when beef cost as much as chicken, I could just make a table. Week zero, week one, week two, week three, week four. I already know week four is the answer, but I could just go through and say, okay, at week zero, I would put zero in for X, and beef would just cost 235. And at week one, I put one in for x, so that'd be 235 plus 0.25, which would give me 260. And I could go through, again, adding 0.25, adding a quarter each time. So after two weeks, that would be 285. After three weeks, that would be 310. After four weeks, that would be 335. After five weeks, that would be 360. And after six weeks, that would be 385, and so forth and so on. And then I can look and see what happens to chicken. So chicken follows this. It starts off at $1.75. But then we add $0.40. Cents. 
each week. So 175 plus 40 cents gives me $2.15 plus 40 cents gives me $2.55 plus 40 cents gives me $2.95 plus 40 cents gives me $3.35. I'll put the dot 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 right now because you can see through this method that at four weeks that's when they have the same price. Give this one a shot. Okay, so a line path in the xy plane passes through the origin and has slope 1 7. Which of the following points lies on the line? So a couple of uh, options here. The, the sort of geometric thought way is I could say, okay, I know this will look like this, and my line, if it goes through the origin with a 1 7 slope, that means up 1 over 7, will look like this. And I can even just sort of look at this and right off the bat get my correct answer. So um, 0, 7 will be here, clearly not on my line. 1, 7 would be over 1, up 7, clearly not on my line. 7, 7 would be over and up the same amount, clearly not on my line. But over 14, up 2, that has a real possibility. So that's one way to look at this, is to just um, look at which one is the only possibility as long as you understand how slopes, rise over run, works, and points x comma y, not x comma z, x comma y work. A better way to do this would be the following. If it passes through the origin, that means that the y-intercept is 0. If it has 1 7 slope, that means my slope is 1 7. And so I can write the slope-intercept form of this line, y equals 1 7 x plus 0. And then I can just check the points. If I put 0 in for x, so let's say does 7 equal 1 7, does it equal 1 7 times 0? And the answer is no. And I can check the other ones. Does 7 for my y equal 1 7 times 1? And again, the answer is no. 7 is not 1 7. Does 7 equal 1 7 times 7? The answer again, no. 7 is not equal to 1. But finally, does 2 equal 1 7 of 14, or which is the same thing as 14 divided by 7? And the answer is yes. That's my answer. All right, give us a shot. Okay, so um, this one looks really pretty crazy, but it's actually not too bad. The first thing you want to notice is this x being greater than 3, most of the time when these are tossed in, they don't make a difference to the problem you're doing on the SAT. This is thrown in here, so I can't have something like x equals negative 2, because that would make negative 2 plus 2 equals 0, and you cannot divide by 0 and get a defined value. Division by 0 is undefined. So, um, I'm going to pretty much ignore this. It, it's important mathematically for the problem, but it's not important for how you're going to solve it. But what I am going to do is try to deal with these fractions in fractions. And here's how I deal with it. So, I, I want a least common denominator. I notice that I have something over x plus 2. I have something over x plus 3. These are different factors, which means that I can multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by x plus 2, x plus 3. If I do this, the x plus 2 will cancel this out, the x plus 3 will cancel that out, and I will no longer have a fraction in my fraction. So when I multiply through, clearly, clearly, this 1 times the top will just give me x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now the bottom, which is why I chose what I chose, when I multiply this through here, the x plus 2's cancel, I'll just be left with x plus 3 at the bottom, there. I have a plus between them. When this multiplies here, the x plus 3's cancel, 
I'll just be left with the x plus 2. And cleaning up, x plus 2 times x plus 3, I can multiply out. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is 6. In the denominator, just combine like terms. 2x plus 5. And combine like terms, I have a 5x here. Notice the only reasonable answer here is B. Okay, give this a shot. All right, so again, some of these problems are a little bit tricky, and this is one that's a little bit tricky as well. So uh, two real options I see here. The first option is the following, um, and this is the way that most, pe most students might try it. I can try to solve for one of these variables and then use that in this expression to get a value. And so I'll do it that way. That's not the way I, I would do this problem myself, but it's a way that many of my students might. So I'm going to solve for y by first subtracting 3x from both sides. Clearly, I can't subtract 12 and 3x. They're not like terms. So I have negative y equals 12 minus 3x. And I'll divide everything through by negative 1 to get the y by itself. And I would get negative 12 plus 3x. And with this, I can put um, that into this expression. So I have 8 to the x in the numerator divided by 2 to the y. But y is this right here. So 2 to the negative 12 plus 3x. And now I can just sort of knock out some of the uh, exponent properties, realizing, first of all, that when I have an exponent that's added together, it's the same as multiplying the bases. So the 8 to the x doesn't change, but I would have in the denominator 2 to the negative 12, 2 to the positive 3x. Next thing I can do is see that I have a negative exponent, which means I can move it to the numerator, which means I would have 2 to the positive 12, 8 to the x over 2 to the 3x. And then I can notice that I have um, 2 to the 3x. And let me do this to the side. So 2 to the 3x is the same thing because of power of a power as 2 to the 3 to the x. But 2 to the 3 is 8. So this will be 8 to the x. And pulling that back in, I will see that I have 2 to the 12th. 8 to the x over 8 to the x, and left with 2 to the 12th. So kind of involved. They're, they're exponent properties that many kids learn um, somewhere between 8th grade and sophomore year, but it really sort of steps it up a little bit. Now here is the way I would do it, which is a little bit different. I would start over here and notice that these both are powers of the same prime. So um, this up here, I notice that 8 is 2 cubed, so I know that 8x, 8, 8 to the x over 2 to the y, will be 2 cubed to the x over 2 to the y. And from that, with power over power, I know that this is 2 to the 3x over 2 to the y, and now, power of a quotient, that's wrong, quotient of powers, that's the right rule. I would subtract the exponents, so I get 2 to the 3x minus y, and almost like magic, they told you what 3x minus y is. 3x minus y is 12, so I know that that's 2 to the 12th. Again, either way you look at this, it's kind of a tricky problem, and you'd have to sort of work your way through it. Okay. Last problem for today's video, so give it a shot. All right, so after, um, after that problem we just had where it was kind of crazy, uh, this one actually shouldn't be too bad. So I have an A, I have a B, it looks really rough, but I'm just going to dive in and multiply this through. So FOIL, I could do area model, I could, whatever you want. So 
ax times bx would be abx squared. ax times 7 would be plus 7ax. 2 times bx would be plus 2bx, and 2 times 7 is 14. Now notice they told us that it's equal to this expression on the right. So that will equal 15x squared plus cx plus 14. Now we want to figure out what the two possible values um, for c are. So in here, if I go through this, I know that, let me change colors back, I know this is abx squared. I can so sort of combine like terms, but you're going to say, hold on, hold on, this is 7a, this is 2b. Really, I'm just going to sort of take the x out of there and see that this middle term would be 7a plus 2b all times x. If you're unclear how that happened, just think about distributing this back through, and you'd see I would have 7ax, 2bx. And now... I'm just going to line this up and see that, okay, I want AB to be 15. I also want A plus B to equal 8. And there's really only two possibilities here. You, you can check them out, um, but the only possible values, I can do it mentally, Two things that add up to 8 and multiply to 15, well, that's either 5 plus 3, or that's 3 plus 5. There are no other possibilities. So, in here, I'll actually use these two in here and say, all right, so let's just find this out. What's 7 times 5 plus 2 times 3? 35 plus 6 is 41. What is 7 times 3 plus 2 times 5? 21 plus 10 gives me 31. And, lo and behold, answer choice is D, 31 or 41. 